Here we are again, preparing for the next album, The Sound of the Pentecost and Breakthrough Experience. I am so ecstatic and glad what God is doing for us and what he's about to do for us in this season. Some things we may not understand and know why God has done them, and some things we may know why God has done them. But I am familiar with the scripture that says, we still yet got to count it all joy. After the song, Fight On, God will wipe all tears away. God blessed through those songs. He will deliver. People were set free. The song was all over the nation. People has been blessed all everywhere. It has been an amazing eight years in counting with Apostle James Pinckney and the Voices of Faith. We've had our highs and we've had our lows, but through it all, I counted all joy and wouldn't change a thing about it. We've been through hardships, hard trials, starting off in our very first album. Amen, but we thank God for this album that's about to come forth. It's been a hold uh, during the, pan the pandemic, placed place this album on hold. We were traveling and singing the gospel, going to state to state. Then came COVID. COVID slowed us down in a way where we couldn't practice, we couldn't rehearse. You know, people lost their loved ones. Me losing my grandmother during the pandemic last year but we still managed to strengthen ourselves and get us prepared for the next project. We started planning for our next step and here came the enemy kicking up again. That project was once again put on hold. Not only was that project put on hold due to a global pandemic, it was also put on hold because we got a diagnosis. Mr. Pinckney, it's hard for us to tell you, but you have cancer. I, when we were informed that he had been diagnosed with lung cancer, I began to question and ask God why him. Uh, at first I was a little, it knocked me off my feet, really. My brother, as well as my pastor, he is so important to me. I love my brother with everything within me. All he has to do is call me and I'm coming. He's motivated me in so many ways, spiritually as well as in my personal life. I said to myself, this can't be true. This can't be another test that God is putting us through because he knows that we have the faith. He knows that we trust him through anything. We've been through many trials, many tribulations with my dad. We've been through many hills. Now it's my twin. It's my brother. So my heart just, it just crumbled when I heard the news that she gave me. And I just, I, I didn't know what I could say. I just know that I, I just knew in that moment, I needed to leave work to get to my friend. I immediately was devastated, devastated to the point where, you know, I, I was in denial. I was like, not Apostle Pinckney, not this man who, you know, prays for everybody else, who touches all these different people's lives and who has been there not just for others, but also for me and my family too. But one thing I told my children, that God was never going to leave us. This is another storm and we are going to get through it. I want you all to keep the faith and believe God. Cancer is just a word. And I look to God. And I said, Lord, you, it's just you. You're the only man that can do this. You're the only man that can turn this situation around. And we prayed and we fast and we believe God. Oh yes, it hurt. It hurt so bad but I trust God. At that moment, I was not angry at God, but I was at that moment saying, this cannot be happening to me. I'm 45 years old. 
have not lived the prime of my life yet, and hear me dealing with cancer, can't be. But then God began to talk and speak to me and speak to my spirit, letting me know that the just shall always live by faith. With the house being burned down and my dad being through dialysis, we can get through this. Like, this is nothing. Like, we just gotta be strong. Like, like his song, fight on, we just gotta fight on. When one hurt, we all hurt. And when I got the news uh, about Pastor JP, with a sickness, no matter what we go through, we're gonna be there for you. And like you said on that song, you fight on, brother, you fighting on, and fighting even more for yourself and for others. The doctors read by one book, but I know that believers, we go by a different book. We read by a different book. So I just wanna encourage you in the Lord just to continue to fight the good fight. But the Lord spoke to me. This is his test. This is his trial. And not once in my mind that I doubt that God was not going to bring him through. But I praise God. Yes, Lord. And I say to myself, we are going to fight on. Fight on, people of God. Because God will wipe all those tears away from your eyes. I just knew he was going to be okay. Because the Lord had told me that he was going to be all right, that he had him. And I began to pray, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed. And I told God, you got to show me something. Give me some kind of sign. And when I came in church one Sunday, he was sitting in the chair. And God remind me, reminded me of the song, Fight On. And I, 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 I began to feel a little better in my spirit, no matter what the doctor said, no matter what test results may have been, uh, we may have seen, I began to stand on the word of God, knowing that he was going to bring us through this trial and through this tribulation, and God was going to heal the man of God. I sat there in the hospital saying, Lord, what do you, what, what, what do you want from me? What do, you, what do you want us to do with this project? And God wanted to make sure that when we began to minister, sing, and give the word through song, that it was not about flesh, but it was all about him. Some of our minds were on awards. Our minds were winning Dove Awards, uh, Grammy Awards, Stellar Awards. But that's not what God had called us to do. The Bible said he called us to holiness. Holiness is a lifestyle. A lifestyle where we are able to live a clean life. We are to treat people how they want to be treated. The doctor said, Mr. Pinckney, we have to make a decision. And we did a long time. <laughs> but the decision had to be made. My sister of the Cromwell, they took me to the emergency room that morning to be prepared for the surgery. Me crying and not understanding, Lord, how am I gonna come out of this surgery and still do your will? Well, the surgery came and I went to prepare, went to the area to be post up for the surgery. I was believing God. When they went into my body, they had to take the whole left side of my lung. I sat there, I said, Lord, how am I going to sing? How am I going to preach? How am I going to deliver a word to your people that you are a healer and a deliverer? And I, I was praying one morning, about two o'clock one morning, and the Lord showed me Apostle JP. He was in a, a general's uniform. And the Lord began to tell me that he was not gonna take the man of God 
he was going to raise him up. This was only a test. This was only a trial, a process that he had to go through. But God was going to raise the man of God up. I just couldn't imagine losing him to cancer. So I prayed and I also reminded myself that God doesn't give any type of battle to any type of person. And I know he's one of God's soldiers. And I know that battle that he would have been able to fight and get through it. And sure enough, that's what he did. He fought, he fought on. I look at his life and how, how many things he's been through, going through his education. All of that made me want to get more because I know I can do it. I've watched this family literally, not just walk by faith, but they live the example. And I could not be any more grateful to be connected to such a strong and devoted family, such a powerful family, such an anointed family, a family that is very serious about their relationship and their walk with Christ. This has been hard for all of us but God has brought us through. Once again, God has brought us through. He has never left us. He has never turned his back on us. He's always been there for us. Whenever the test, trial, tribulation, adversity will come, God will always took us through. And I give God the praise. I give God the glory. This is what I do every day. Wave my hand and tell him thank you. We have faith enough to know that if God brought us to it, he's going to take us through it. We have faith enough to believe that we always win. We have faith enough to believe that God said in his word that his grace and his mercy, it walks beside us. And God allows us to know that by his stripes, we are healed. But I thank God. I can truly say today that God has really brought us through this once again. I was singing all over the country, all over the place, state after state, place after place. But in that moment time frame, the testimony that I was giving was the testimony that my mom and dad had, the testimony that my father had, testimony that my siblings had. But I sat on the bed one day and I, I noticed what, this, what the title of the album is, The Pentecost Experience, as well as The Breakthrough Experience. And what God was saying, that this city is going to be launched across the nation. And if, and for, in order for that to have happened, there has to be an experience attached to it. This is just going to be his testimony, just like how my mom has a testimony. He can, you know, tell his testimony to everyone, get people through whatever they're going through, letting them know that don't let hardships and these struggles, you know, bad news get to you. You just got to keep fighting on. And that's exactly what we're doing. Once we get over this, we'll get over anything. Being that he's won this last battle, I'm looking forward to the testimony that's coming from this last battle that he went through. I know that with the experience that he's gone through, that when he begins to preach about it, it's going to spread like wildfire, and it's going to bring more people's lives to come and surrender to God. I had no doubt in my mind that God was going to allow him to sing again. And God done just that. God is a healer, people. Stand on his word, stand on his promise, and trust him. And here we are going into 2022 with a brand new project that I know there will be another sound that the nation will hear again. It shall be another sound that will ring out that people will say, who voice is that that I'm hearing? Many will come seeking, what sound is that that I'm hearing? But I had not a shadow of a doubt in my mind <laughs> that when the sound of Pentecost, breakthrough experience goes through. My experience of dealing with lung cancer, 
I've never smoked a day in my life. That's why I couldn't understand how I could have cancer. But I realized now what God was saying. You have an experience now that you are able to tell others of, his, of my goodness that if I brought you out, I will bring you out too. I say to you today, prepare for the city. It's gonna to touch your life. It's gonna open doors, change minds, save souls, and set the captives free. God wanted to use me as that sacrifice. In the beginning part, I didn't want to be that sacrifice. Because my oldest brother, before he was killed, he was a sacrifice. And at his funeral, over seven, 70 people gave their lives to Christ. But at this moment in my life, I didn't want it to be the sacrifice. I just wanted to sing, and I just wanted to preach. But I am so overwhelmed and excited for 2022 to know that the sound of Pentecost and breakthrough experience is going to be released. To let people know that God will wipe all the tears from your eyes. To let them know that I'm on the altar, Lord, and I want you to bless my soul. Right now, he's a right now God. But we want you to understand to know that in this season, be encouraged. The Bible says to us in Romans 8 and 28, and we know all things work together for the good of them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. Voices of faith has a purpose. It's not about awards. It's not about accolades. It's about winning souls for the kingdom. He called us as a remnant in this last season to be able to draw those as many as we can to the kingdom of God. Because as the old saint used to say, it's getting late in the evening and the sun is going down. God bless you.